So a few days ago now, Bernie Sanders went on Fox News. Um, we discussed how people were, some centrist Democrats were going after him for this. And I came out here and said, no, don't go after him for this. It's a great idea. And his whole point is to try to spread left ideas and change minds and get people to agree with us. And, and very positive things can happen as a result of it, even though he goes into it knowing that the hosts are not honest actors and they're smear merchants and they're going to say stupid things. Um, well, now you see the wisdom in Bernie going on Fox News. You're going to see it clear as day. So this is when they went back and forth on the issue of Medicare for All. I'm going to show you the full part where they talk about that. Some people are just clipping out the part where the audience cheers for it. A Fox News audience cheering for Medicare for All. That's in this clip, but I also want to show you the stuff he said before it and after it, because I think it's all important in context, because he knocked this out of the park. And the bottom line is, the Fox News hosts were simply unprepared to deal with somebody who knows what they're talking about. So let's take a look, and then we'll come back and discuss. My question is, why do you believe that the government can provide better health care than the private sector? And why should people who like their plans be forced to switch? Okay. Um, first of all, let's be clear what we mean by Medicare for all. Okay? Medicare is a government-run program for seniors, which is widely popular and quite effective. Uh, in 1965, when Lyndon Johnson passed that bill, it was called by some Republicans, socialism and everything else. But you go to the average senior and you say, how do you feel about Medicare? And they will tell you that they will oppose any Republican effort to cut Medicare. And by the way, in Trump's budget, he has proposed an $845 billion cut over a 10-year period to Medicare, which seniors don't want. So to answer your question, we are not talking about government-run health care. The Veterans Administration and most veterans think that that's a pretty good health care system. Talk to the American Legion and the VFW. They strongly defend the uh, veterans' uh, health care. That's government run. What we are talking about is simply a single-payer insurance program, which means that you will have a card which has Medicare on it. You'll go to any doctor that you want. You'll go to any hospital that you want. And by the way, millions of people today are in networks which prevent them from doing this. So this gives you freedom of choice with regard to the doctors you go to or the hospitals you go to. But here is the main point when we talk about health care. Currently, right now, we've got 30 million people, zero health insurance, and many of you and tens of millions of Americans are underinsured with high deductibles and copayments. Is that correct? Yes. All right. So what happens is there are estimates that some 30,000 Americans die every single year because they don't go to the doctor when they should, all right? Meanwhile, we pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. One out of five Americans are getting ripped off by the drug companies who make billions in profits while charging us the highest prices in the world. And on top of all of that, we spend twice as much per capita on health care as do the people of any other nation. So the question that I throw back to you, do you think it makes sense to spend twice as much per capita as the people of any other nation and be the only country on, in the world not to guarantee health care to all people? Um, this audience, this audience has a lot of Democrats in it. It has uh, Republicans, independents, Democratic socialists, conservatives. Uh, I want to Ask the audience a question, if you could raise your hand here. A show of hands of how many people get their insurance from work, private insurance, right now? How many get it from private insurance? Okay, now of those, how many are willing to transition to what the senator says, a government-run system? There's 180 million people on private insurance. All right, let's deal with that, right? And Fair they, question. they right. would be lost, right? Oh, right. To a, your right. system. Fair okay. question. Okay. Good question. Good, thank and you. And I know it's what the right wing throws out, so let me answer it, all right? <laughs> Millions of people every single year lose their health insurance. You know why? They get fired or they quit and they go to another employer. I was a mayor for eight years. You know what I did, what probably every mayor in America does, is you look around for the best insurance program, the most cost-effective insurance. You change insurance. 
Every year, millions of workers wake up in the morning and their employer has changed the insurance that they have. Maybe they like the doctors. People are nodding their heads. Okay, so this is not new. Every year. Now, what we are talking about actually is stability. That when you have a Medicare for all, it is there now and will be there in the future. Senator. Recently, um, Aetna merged with CVS. You may recall that big merger, which, in my view, will drive health care costs up. The gentleman who was head of uh, Aetna's, a name, Mr. Bertolini. You know what he got from putting together that merger? He got a $500 million bonus. Do you think that's how we should spend health care no, dollars? I mean, I think everybody is in agreement that health care needs to be fixed in this country. The question is how. And my question to you was it, it will drive up taxes to pay for health care. And not just the wealthy will pay for that. The middle class good. will also okay. pay for Very it. Very good. So how do you justify it? And All right, Martha, what are you not including in your discussion? You tell me. I will tell you. You're not going to pay any health insurance premiums. <laughs> But look, Martha, one way or the other. Martha. Whether it's in your income oh, tax or your payroll tax, you're right. going to Look, health care is not free. You never heard me suggest that we're going to match You just said it was going to be free for everyone. It's going to be free at the point of when you use it. Okay? And you go to... Why are you so shocked by this? Because someone's going to pay. Goes, somebody is going <laughs> to pay. Who are they? Who okay. Pays? Okay. One minute. One second. Okay. Relax. I'm just we'll be talking. Please. We'll get through this it's together. It's a common question. Okay. <laughs> we had, okay. The, All we right, had here we so many email questions. Okay. Sanders, how he is fair going enough. To pay. I got it. It's a fair. But question. the first thing, let's just say hypothetically. Okay. You're a, you are um, self-employed, and you have you got a husband and two kids. Okay, family of four. Do you know how much that family is paying today for health care? Tell me. Twenty-eight thousand dollars a year. Okay. All right. We're spending eleven thousand dollars per person. We are saying to that family of four, you ain't going to pay that twenty-eight thousand. You're not paying any more premiums. You're not paying any more co-payments. You're not paying any more deductibles. How's that? $28,000 you are not paying. But does that mean you're not going to pay something? Of course it does. You're going to pay more in taxes. And do members of Congress who right. now have gold-plated health insurance... No, we don't. Well, they have a special plan that's outside Obamacare. Uh, mm. A different plan. You know, do member of, members of Congress, are they going to do that transition as Damn well? Damn right. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Why would you suggest otherwise? But I, I want to make the point... I want to get back to the point that Martha raised. Look, healthcare costs money. Every other country, or virtually every country, does it in the same way we do education for our kids. Okay, when a kid walks into school, kid doesn't have to take out a credit card, right? It's paid for out of public funds. That's what most countries do. So if you're asking me, if your question is a fair question, are people going to pay more in taxes? Yes. But at the end of the day, the overwhelming majority of people are going to end up paying less for health care because they're not paying premiums, co-payments, and deductibles. What I'm perpetually amazed by is that the Fox News hosts have their own bubble, this right-wing Republican talking point bubble, and they are so deep in that bubble and now so married to the sound of their own voices that they are genuinely unaware of the very easy and simple counter-arguments to their shitty points. This reminds me of an old debate I saw. It was, um, I think it was Sean Hannity and Christopher Hitchens, and they were talking about the death of one of the evangelical mega-pastors. And Hannity said something like, it's just a really silly argument. And Hitchin said, you give me the terrible impression of somebody who's never read a counter-argument to the things you say. And that's what I got here. It's like, Bernie has just basic, empirically correct responses to their objections. But they state the objections as if it's like, well, you obviously are not going to be able to respond to this. And he's like, actually, I have a response, and I, it's a very easy one, and I can't believe that you asked that question thinking that it would stump me. So, listen, my one of the reasons that uh, I do this show is I actually think it's very important to spread the ideas and the policies that would help regular people. And so... In this segment, what I want to do is basically plead to the people on the right who are in that bubble and might have just cocked their head a little bit to the side and said, 
Well, that's interesting. It seemed like Bernie had command of the material and the Fox hosts just were trying to play gotcha. That's correct. That is what was happening. Now, look at the evidence. Look at the data. The thing that's so frustrating about this um, healthcare debate is that it's not a debate. The debate has been settled for decades. Every other developed country has one version or another of a single-payer healthcare system. And they pay half what we pay, and they cover everybody, and they have better health outcomes. Full stop. That tells you everything you need to know. You know what else tells you everything you need to know? Every study that's been done on this finds the same thing. There was the old World Health Organization study, I think it was from the year 2000, which found that the U.S. ranks 37th in the world when it comes to our healthcare system. We are not number one, we are number 37. Now, it's a fair point if somebody says, well, Kyle, that's really old. Like, really? You're going to use, like, a damn near 20-year-old study to prove your point? Okay, put that aside, then, because that is a fair point if you say that's too old of a study and we shouldn't use it. Granted, point granted, put that aside. There's a Commonwealth Fund study that, that I think they do it, like, every two or three years. Um, but this one came out very recently, just a couple years ago. And you know what they found? We rank, they studied 11 developed countries uh, and their healthcare systems. Out of 11, you know what we ranked? Dead last, 11th. So, again, every other developed country, they pay half what we pay, they cover everybody, we have over 20 million uninsured, and they have better health outcomes. So, the thing that is so frustrating about this to somebody like Bernie is that he always feels like he's in an episode of The Twilight Zone, where he's out there saying the most obvious thing ever, and he's confronting a wall of ignorance and a wall of misleading propaganda from overpaid anchors who are comfortable because they get the fucking Cadillac plan and, and the top of the line. And if you're wealthy, here's the concession. If you're wealthy, if you're a Saudi prince with billions of dollars, yes, you want to come to the U.S. for care. Why? Because for the top 0.01%, it's the best care in the world. But for your average citizen, it is literally the worst in the developed world. So, now let's go through some of the um, points that he makes. His first point is just a simple one about health care versus health insurance. What Bernie is proposing is publicly funded insurance, so that version of a single-payer system. Now, when you look at the NHS, so when you look at the United Kingdom, they have public funding, so tax dollars, fund public hospitals, so public institutions. What Bernie's talking about is not an NHS-style system, what he's talking about is more of a French-style system, or if I'm not mistaken, I think a Canadian-style system as well, although I could be wrong about the Canadian one. You guys could fact-check me on that. But in France, what they do is public funding, so tax dollars, funding private hospitals and private institutions, private clinics, private doctors. So it's not like you go full, like, nationalize absolutely everything. It's like, okay, just... It's... It's public in the sense that it's funded by tax dollars, but the government is the single insurer, not the single deliverer of all the health care. So there is a difference there, there is a distinction there. And the argument has been made, and I think it's a fair point, that that is actually the compromise. That the actual left-wing position is an NHS-style system, public funding of public institutions, and, you know, the right-wing position is, okay, let's have everything be private, which, by the way, again, is proven to be a disaster. Um, but the compromise could be, we could still have private institutions, but you do public funding of those private institutions. So Bernie makes clear that that's what he's talking about. Bernie also makes clear, for all the fear-mongering about the VA and stuff, did you know that Medicare, government healthcare, and the VA, government healthcare, they consistently rank as better and more liked than our private system? So, it, this is what the right is so good at. They're so good at pushing a narrative, even if it doesn't fit the facts, they'll push the narrative to the point where everybody goes, yeah, I guess, I guess the VA sucks and I guess Medicare sucks. But they don't. They consistently rank higher than our private system. Furthermore, when you look at how much of each healthcare dollar or health insurance dollar actually goes to care in the private system, it's about 80 cents out of every dollar that goes to care. Now, you might say, hey, that's not bad. So only 20 cents goes to overhead costs? That's not bad at all. There's a caveat. The caveat is pre-Obamacare, because Obamacare forced that to be the case. Pre-Obamacare, it was like 
some in some cases 50 50 like half the 50 cents of a dollar would go towards overhead and only 50 cents would go towards towards actual care you know what it is for um medicare it's either 92 or or 95 percent goes to actual health care so 92 cents or 95 cents of the dollar goes towards actual care so the overhead is so much less so again i i could sit here and just ring off facts all day that bust up the arguments on the other side but it, it's kind of amazing at this point because even with the wall of propaganda that's coming from Fox News, even centrist Democrats aid in this propaganda. Medicare for all, it's not possible. Unicorn, fairy dust, pie in the sky. Every other country does it, but somehow it's fucking impossible. Um, even with all that, it's now the overwhelming majority of Americans that support it. What is it, 70% of Americans now support it? Even a majority of Republicans, 51% of Republicans support it. So the, even with the wall of propaganda, people are onto it. And they're like, this doesn't, this, something smells fishy here. And this is one of the main reasons why Bernie's so loved, is that he's coming out there and he's just telling the truth. And he's up against a wall of bullshit. And now he's managing to convince people. He put this issue front and center. He's managing to convince people. And um, they, they're so ineffectual in responding because now everybody's seeing the light and there's no going back. You can't convince people that, you know, our system somehow better now after all the information that's out there in the in the public square. The other point that he made that I loved is when he said, um, under our system, under Medicare for all, you get freedom of choice. You do not get freedom of choice in our current system. Now, how does that make sense? Because some people might say, I don't, I thought this now is uh, freedom of choice. No, what Bernie's saying is under a Medicare for all system, you can go to any hospital or any doctor you want. That is freedom of choice. Don't worry, the government's not going to get in between you and your doctor. The government's going to allow you to see any doctor you want. Now, on the flip side, what do we have now? We have fucking networks. So just to give you one example, but again, I could go on all day here. When I visit um, L.A., whether it's to do Politicon or to go on uh, Joe Rogan's show or go on TYT, when I'm out there, if something happens to me, there's no fucking L.A. hospitals in my health insurance network. So I'm going to have to pay out of pocket. And that shit is how people go bankrupt. Something happens, they're not covered. Oh my God, you got to pay out of pocket. You got to pay fucking whatever it may be, depending on what the problem is. $50,000, $100,000 if it's something serious. This is what happens in this country. Medical bills is one of the top causes of bankruptcy. What a, honestly, ridiculous notion that is. Like, oh, you have coverage, but only if you stay geographically in this tiny location within your own country. If I go on a golf trip to Florida or something, or if I go to L.A., like, no, okay, you get sick, you're on your own, bitch. The other thing is, what Bernie lays out there, he wants to eliminate copays, deductibles, premiums. How happy would you be if those were gone? And by the way, those are what's called a private tax. So everybody's, oh my God, your taxes are going to be raised under Medicare for all. Right now, the point is you're paying more in taxes for your health care. It's just a private tax. It is a private... You have to pay it. You got to get health care. So you have to pay. You have to pay the premiums, the copays, the deductibles. At the end of the day, you're paying way more in taxes. With our current system, it's just a private tax. This is how you have to start thinking about this stuff. And again, they're so fundamentally unprepared to deal with what he's saying. So when Martha McCallum thinks it's like a gotcha, like, oh yeah, Bernie? Well, how are you going to pay for it? If, if you'd fucking listen, he'll explain it to you, and, and you will digest it if you try to digest it. But you're, you know, you got the wall of like, no, I am a talking point machine, so I am going to pretend like this is a gotcha. Bernie's response is effectively, um, under Medicare for All system, your, your taxes go up, but if I eliminate your premiums, your deductibles, and your co-payments, you are saving money. And again, that's a fact. So our, our overall health care costs in this country, if we do Medicare for all, costs $32 trillion, roughly, over 10 years. And people have pointed that out and go, ah, we can't afford it. $32 trillion. $32 trillion. What they don't tell you is, if we don't do Medicare for all, it would cost... 37 trillion over that same 10-year time span. 
So according to a detailed study and analysis from the University of Massachusetts Amherst, it was actually a meta-analysis on this. I think it was a meta-analysis. But anyway, it would save $5 trillion to move to a Medicare for All system. So, I mean, there is, there is no rebuttal, man. This is like a flawless victory Mortal Kombat type situation. This is not, like, this is literally flawless victory territory. This is anybody who's willing to actually pay attention to the evidence, it's game, set, match. It's over. And, you know, that's why it's so frustrating because, you, like, you have the rise of many right-wing commentators, whether it's Stephen Crowder or Ben Shapiro, and they have sizable followings. And uh, on this issue, they simply don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They're ideologues. They are playing for a team as opposed to following the evidence to its logical conclusion. And it's embarrassing. Like, remember when Ben Shapiro tweeted, like, Bernie was talking about how it's insane, you know, you go bankrupt for some sort of medical procedure, and Ben Shapiro went after him and said something along the lines of, I walk into a furniture store and I can't afford expensive furniture. Isn't that crazy? Like, this is the intellectual they, that, you know, we're supposed to take seriously? Oh, God damn it, man, it's so sad. Um... So when Martha McCallum says you're going to pay one way or the other, the response is, that's right, but you're going to pay less under a Medicare for All system and everybody gets covered and you have better health outcomes. Um, and then final few things here. I didn't know that fact about how when Aetna and CVS had a merger, somebody got $500 million. Like that's, That is such a great example of like this is how fucked our system is. Like, is really, that's, that's what should be happening? That's how, like, people literally profit off of misery and, and pain in this country. What do you think a, a private health insurance company is? It's, it's like a mafia. It's like a middleman, for-profit, rapacious mafia where how do they make more money? How do private, um, for-profit health insurance companies make money? They deny care. The more they deny care, the more money they make, the happier their shareholders are. So they're always looking for ways to weasel out of paying for coverage. Um, and, of course, the part that blew up here, the part that got all the coverage was, this is a Fox News audience, a Bernie Sanders town hall, and they asked, like, hey, who would want to transition to Medicare for All? And the place explodes with cheers. Now, Admittedly, they were a lot. A lot of pro Bernie people were there. I guess they didn't, you know, micromanage the audience to get all right wingers. But I kind of thought they would do that, and then it looks like they didn't do that. So when you had a, like a normal sample size of people there, and it, what happened was you got a lot of Bernie Sanders supporters because Bernie Sanders is very popular. So since that's the case, yeah, they that's them being so like they drank the Kool Aid so thoroughly the Fox hosts, that they really expected, even though there were a decent number of Bernie supporters in the audience, like, oh, if we ask if they want to keep their private insurance or if they'll switch to Medicare for all, obviously they're going to want to keep their private insurance. Bro, e Republicans hate their private insurance too, man. We all have a horror story. Every one of us has a fucking horror story. So it's just, it was really fun to see that bubble burst on live TV. And like I said... Ultimately, these guys just weren't prepared. Martha McCallum wasn't prepared. Um, Brett Baer wasn't prepared. I, I honestly think Brett Baer hates his job. I really do believe that because I've seen him. I said this on Kylan Corn the other day. I've seen him at uh, the Pebble Beach Pro-Am on TV when the golf pros play with like celebrities and stuff, and he's played in it. He was like a kid on Christmas. He was so happy. He was smiling. He was excited. He loves golf. He's out there. He's like, yes. Anytime I see him on Fox News, he looks miserable. He looks like he fucking hates his life. So that dude's not prepared to counter-argue finer points of health insurance and health care with a guy who eats, sleeps, and breathes this, breathes this stuff like Bernie Sanders. And Martha McCallum, again, is not even interested in the rebuttals. Like, you can give a sound rebuttal to her and she'll just bulldoze over it because she doesn't care. She views herself, her job, as a talking point machine. So, listen... In conclusion, for everybody out there who might be on the right and listening to this, it's time. It's time. It's time for you to see the light. It's time for you to acknowledge the reality of the situation. Now, I'm not saying, hey, you have to abandon all your right-wing beliefs or whatever this second. No. 
But here's one area where, and and just to be clear, conservatives in other developed countries are pro single payer health care. So it this isn't like, oh, if I, you know, if I change my mind on this, there goes my whole ideology. No, 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 not necessarily. I mean, maybe we'll work on you over time. <laughs> but no, this is one of those issues where there are conservatives in the rest of the developed world who are like, well, we're not stupid. Like, obviously, we know private health care is worse. Duh. So here we go. And by the way, I got a text from my brother-in-law. Uh, his buddy, who's a hardcore Republican, texted him and said, I think um, I'll vote for Bernie Sanders. What? Why? Because this is what happens. When you go to engage with these folks, you can change hearts and minds. The only thing you can't do is throw stones from the outside and shame them. Uh, you're irredeemable. The Hillary strategy. You're irredeemable. You're, you know, forget you. No, if you go and engage like Bernie did, and you argue right to their face. No, here's why you're wrong, and I'm going to tell you. I'm going to respect you enough to tell you to your face why you're wrong. That's how you change hearts and minds. So a hardcore Republican said, I'm thinking of changing parties, voting for Bernie Sanders. And my brother-in-law said, well, why is that? He said, well, look, he's for the policies that help the most people, and I like that. And there are some issues where I still disagree with him, like the issue of abortion. But yeah, I could look past that. Boom. What more can you ask for, man? So how many stories like that are there really out there because of what Bernie did with this town hall? And that's why you go on. And that's why he was 100% correct. So Bernie, wonderful job. This was legendary here. And hear me now, quote me later. If Bernie gets through the primary, because that's the hard part, if he gets through the primary, he will landslide Donald Trump. Write it in stone.